Okay, so we are busy with compound angles and, and double, double angles. angles. Now I'm not going to write them every time on the board, but things are going to happen like in the next step, we're going to say simplify this to one trigonometric ratio. What would be your answer of that? What are we seeing? Two, since something cause something the same. This is a what identity. And you don't know it yet because you haven't studied it. Two, since something cause something is a sin double angle. Nobody's going to tell you that. You've got to know it. It is on your formula sheet, but it's not going to jump out at you unless you, try, you are working at it to identify it. So identify that this is two sin cos as a sin double angle, double of what? 22 comma 5, which will be 345. So then you're going to say, man, what happened to the two? Man, what happened to the cos? This is an identity. You've got to know that you know that you know this. So to do that for now is worth a mark. And then you wouldn't leave your answer there. You'd get to the answer of root 2 over 2. Because the sum, the, the actual sum in the textbook said, write it down as one trigonometric ratio. So I'm actually done there, mm -hmm. doing what they asked me to do. Then I'm actually done. We know that whenever there is special angles, they would say, do it without a calculator. Then you couldn't do it with 22,5. You had to go to the 45 first, then get to the special angles. Right, so we've got the next one. Because we're coming very quickly into big sums mm. in which they will appear. What do I do with 2 cos square minus 1? You have to know that that is a what identity cos again? Identity. Cos double angle. You must know that cos double angle is 2 cos square minus 1. So it's going to become cos of double what? The 30. So it will be 60, which you then know is a half. Using your triangles, using your calculator, but you're going to know what that special triangle is. Cos 60 is a half. What about 2 cos squared minus 1? It's the same thing. So we're going to have again cos of the double angle, which is 30. So you're going to want to ask me, man, what happened to the 2 and the 1 and where is the 50 now? Do you see that this is identities? That's why I'm taking a little bit of time to to get you to practice them. Because it is something new to get used to. What happened? Nothing happened. It's a rule. And then when you got there to cause 30, you must know that it was with 3 over 2. Okay, so same thing with 2 cos square minus 1. It's going to be the same thing over and over again. It would have been good if it said cos squared 10 minus sin squared 10. What would that have been? Still a double angle a formula. Because we've had cos square minus 1, 2 cos square minus 1, 2 cos square minus 1, 3 times, and no cos square minus sin square, and no 1 minus 2 sin square. For all of them, you need to recognize them. They're not going to jump out and say, hey, here I am, do you see me? You've got to see it for yourself. And know that this is a cos double angle, which would be cos of double 10, which would be 20. In this case, the sum wouldn't have said do without a calculator because there's nothing to do without a calculator. This is it, cos 20. There's no special angle. Which in any case, this double angle formula to cos square would be the double angle of cos, cos which is 20. And don't forget if it's 1 minus 2 sin square, it's still a cos double angle. Right, this one, what do we do with trips? 3 sin square plus 3 cos square. What is about that? Why would you do that? Take out a 3. What's happening there? It's, a, it's another identity that you've been used to forever. This has always been 1. one. Don't forget about it. You can't manipulate this to be 1. It's not. No way that it's going to be sin squared plus cos squared, which is 1. Never, because it's a double angle formula. In this case, we're going to say it's 3 times. One, which will then just be three. But guys, I said this to you last year in grade 11. If you know your stuff, you could have said, but three sin squared plus three cos squared should be three. Done. No need to show me the factorization. Even something like minus four sin squared. Minus four cos squared. Would be what? Negative. Because basically you're taking out the negative. 
Mm. And then it's mm. a And please be careful that those angles must be the same. same. Whether it's feet or alpha or a number like 20, doesn't matter. That is then going to be negative four, so that you're still on track. Okay, now the new work for today is to take it bigger. All right, what does this remind you of? Cos 50 plus y. So it's that compound angles. Those compound angles, because I'm actually standing in front of it so you can't see clearly. Because your first instinct should be, oh, compound. What does a compound angle do? Cos, cos, sin, sin, and the sign will change. Oh, another one, cos, cos, sin, sin. And then those answers must be multiply, oh my word. And again, and again. But now look at it again, please. See something happening here. The whole big thing is a compound angle formula. Already expanded and you're going to make it smaller. But it's not jumping out at you and telling you what to do. Look carefully. Do you see it being cos, cos? Sin, sin. sin. Careful, look at the angles. 50 plus y. 50 plus y. 50 plus y. 20 plus y. That's why I teach you. It's not going to be marks deducted if you don't do it. But if you already write it with the same angles on the same spaces, you're not going to do so. So therefore, cos, cos, sin, sin will change into sin or cos? Cos compound angle, and the compound angles then must be the 50 plus y and the 20 plus y, but Minus. With a minus, what's wrong here? You should the I should have used brackets. Oh, yeah. It is those two angles, but, then but with a negative. And then this will be applicable to both of them. So please always use your brackets. So we've got cos. Now you could do that in one step 50 plus y minus 20 minus y, which will give me cos 30. Which is again root 3 over 2. But what am I teaching you with this example? Sometimes stuff that is mathematically correct is leading you nowhere. If you wanted to go here and say cos, cos, sin, sin, and cos, cos, sin, sin, and sin, cos, cos, sin, it's going to be an enormous sum, which is going where? No. And they say, no, it's, fine. it's right. What you wrote there isn't wrong, but where is it taking you? You had to make it a smaller, assemble it a bit to get to an answer that actually gets you somewhere. Okay. Okay, it's starting to get enormous. Logically, you wouldn't want the sum to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you've got a choice, you'd rather want to reduce the formulas than expand them. But it is going to happen that you must expand and it does look huge and then everything starts falling away and simplifying, that's fine. And there is alternatives. Yours might be looking horribly, terribly big, but it still looks up to the same ones. I cannot fault you for that. There's always a maybe a little bit better way of doing it, but I can't fault you for making it an enormous sum and then simplifying it to the right answer. Okay, so this one, are you seeing something that I can use? A double angle and a compound and so this is a compound. Cos. Compound. Cos. Is it compound? Yes. yes. I agree. Cos, cos, and sin. Very important. 140, 140. <coughs> so it'll be a cos, cos. compound of 140. But with a minus in between. So that's definitely worth a mark. Man, where does it come from? It's an identity. It's right. And then the rest of it. Now there's lots of stuff you can do. I'm doing what I'm doing for a reason. But you can do a lot of stuff now. That's going to become what? Cos 60. 60. If I left it as it was to sin 60, what is that at the top then? There is a thing called function. What identity is that? That's a sin double angle. Which you didn't have to do. Because I heard co-functions being spoken here. Couldn't I have done co-functions here? You could have. And then sin 30 would become cos, oh, sin 60 would become cos 30 and boom, gone is it? Perfect. But the person who saw this would have said that. So for this one, 
What I did, my alternative was, I saw a double angle. And if you didn't see it and didn't use it, are you fine? Yes. Absolutely, that's the wonder and the terror of dream. Because you can do it on so many different ways. One guy didn't actually see the double angle at all, but he got to the same answer as me. So if I go from here, my method, what did I have to do next? Put it in the calculator, you're going to lose a mark. You're going to have to do a reduction formula because you got to an angle bigger than 90. So you've got to reduce it to an acute angle, which will then be 60. 180 minus 60, right? 60. Which is since 60 positive, because it's second quadrant, over cos 30, and still I could have said, let's make that then cos 30 and cos 30. Or I could have said, I can't remember any of that. I'm just going to say special angle over special angle. Are you with me with how many variations there can be? So sin 60 would be root 3 over 2. Cos 30 is root 3 over 2. Oh, well, they should be the same. Because they are co-functions. So you could have changed them both to be sin 60. Or both to be cos 30. And they would have cancelled out just like this and given me an answer of 1 as well. Even if you didn't see the double angle and you didn't use it, it's fine. Last thing I want to show you today, it lets you think about the sum that we've just done when we started off with our work. Doesn't it look the same? It's not the same. What's wrong with it? I don't have the complete double. And our man says, do the sum, simplify it without a calculator. What are you short? That's that two. Can I just put it in there? I can do it if I legal. Crooked right. If you legalize it, if you put the two there, I'm going to say, uh-uh. Because why are you doing it? Because you're seeing the half and maybe going to a double angle here. Now it is, but it's not true. That's not the same. You put the two there, so make it legal. Divide by two. But please don't do that, because then you're back where you started. What did I want to do with this? I wanted this to be a double angle of 22,5, which is 745. But the 2 has to be there, otherwise it's not the same. Can I simplify this? Because now I have a special angle. So what's the whole purpose of this example? You can make stuff happen once you legalize it. So instead of saying divide by two, couldn't I have had the half here in front? You could have. Saying times with a half, half times two is still one. I'm not changing the sum, but I've got the half there. So whether it's divide by two or times with a half, same it's the same thing. thing. So then this will be root two over two, divide by two or times with two over one, which, oh, one over two, I'm sorry. One over two, which will give me root two over four. For any which way you do it. So what am I trying to teach you? Sometimes, kind of maybe, almost looks like something I want to use, but I can get it there by forcing it. Please don't forget you're not in an equation. So you can't just time the whole thing with two on either side. There's no either side. If you want to force things, you must make it legal. So if you need to add something, just subtract it again. If you need to time, you just divide. But you cannot, in a sum that becomes something like this, um, plus one, like that. So, oh, let's square it. You can't just square this. It's not an equation. You can't just say, well, mm -hmm. ma'am, I don't like that root, so there it's gone. No. How did it go? Okay. okay. You have to have a left-hand side and a right-hand side and legalize stuff like that. This one is going to give you no marks. You cannot, cannot just get rid of a root by squaring it. Okay, so how it same type of thing, just a little bit more, just to get you into the thing of compound angles and double angles, and then we'll get into the more difficult stuff.